Hey guys, welcome out to the shop today. We've got a uh, another mower in the shop that is in need of repair, if it can even be repaired. This is a Lowe's 1442, which is 14 horsepower engine, 42 inch cut. The body is in really good condition. The seat is in okay condition. It's got one tear on the other side. This one's probably been sitting outside a little bit. As you can see down below, the uh, back wheels are off of the rims, so those are probably dry rotted or shot or something. Um, we pretty much just towed it up onto the trailer using that uh, winch we put on the other day. So that thing has already came in handy. But uh, let me walk around to the other side for you guys. There it is from the other side. I mean, the body itself is in fairly good condition. Everything is nice and solid. It's not uh, broken anywhere. We got one little dent right here, but that's not a big deal. But uh, for the most part, I'm surprised at how good this body is. And uh, I got the jumper pack hooked up and we're gonna try to uh, turn it over. The guy said he hasn't been able to get the engine to uh, turn over at all. So he thought it's probably locked. So I said, you know what, I'll take a chance on it and uh, we'll see what's gonna happen. If it is locked up, we'll try to investigate why it is locked up. So there's the engine, a 14 horsepower overhead valve. The IC quiet and uh, let's go ahead and try to turn this over. All right, so we have the jumper pack on. I have the brake depressed. It's in park, neutral, and the deck is raised up. So let's see what's gonna happen. I'll pull the choke out. And we'll throttle up a little bit in case it does start. Yeah, that motor is not even even moving whatsoever. And I, I figured that. Uh, so we're going to try to uh, see why it's not, or why it's locked up. Figured this would be a fun project to dive into. So uh, let's see here. Um, it's probably going to be easiest to get the, all the outside stuff off. That way we can just deal with just the motor. So let's go ahead and disassemble the body and we'll just deal with the motor. Got the body off and the first thing that I'm going to do is check just to make sure that it has oil. Just to see if somebody ran it without oil and it ended up overheating. A bunch of things that could happen i don't see any signs of oil like around the engine so that's a good sign but yeah it's got plenty of oil in it so that's good wonder if we can get a uh, wrench on this bottom pulley under here and try to uh try to turn it so we can't get it turned up here, but there's a pulley up underneath. So let me see if I can get you guys a light. So there is a pulley up underneath right here and that connects to the engine so let's go ahead and try to see if we can get that just all right so i got a uh, wrench and it's a five eighths inch bolt underneath there inside the pulley and we're just gonna try to see if it's locked up like where it won't turn or something might be binding it up oh that's good So it can turn. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pop off this valve cover and see if anything has it stuck. And that would be the possible reason why. So these are all 3 8 inch bolts. We're just gonna loosen this up real quick and just see if anything is happening underneath this. It's got oil, it's got the right amount of oil, so I don't think there's like any kind of blown head gasket 
or anything like that, but it could be like a, uh, a push rod that got bent or rocker broken. Something might have it just bound up to where it doesn't want to go on its own. Four bolts, and they were on tight, so I don't think anybody's been in here looking to figure out what's going on yet. Alright, so here is Ooh, I smell gas strong in there so let me go ahead and turn it back over again and we're gonna see if we can see anything under here all right so this one is moving So is this one. So those are both moving just fine. I hear something scraping though. I'm gonna take this exhaust off real quick as well, just so I can see inside there. And these are three eighths inch as well. So I've been rotating it around for a little bit and it seems like it's been getting a lot easier to actually get it to spin it around like something may have just been bound up. Like uh, it got old and then somebody just wanted to leave it sitting there. I hear it. It's like a scraper. Or that could be just the compression pushing out the exhaust. This is this has gotten a lot easier to uh, get to rotate around than it was before. Yeah, I think I'm just hearing the exhaust coming out wherever the spark plug gets plugged in which I need to find that out as well where in the world is the hole for this other oh, it is all right so I'm gonna cover that up and see if it has compression Oh yeah, yeah, that's got really good compression actually. Let me see if I can get it to uh, turn a little bit on its own. Oh man, that's awesome. But it's got a lot of fuel coming out of that. Out of that exhaust which I don't know if that's just from it being sitting there for so long or if a ring on one of the on the piston has gone bad Ooh, 
Man, there's gas pouring out of this thing. So we just got the uh, top cover off and look at all the goodies that I found in here. Something's been up in here living. But the good thing is that the motor is unstuck. Sounds bad, but it's unstuck. We can fix it now. Alright guys, so what do we need to take off next? Let's see here. I guess the head we need to take off. We can take the Yeah, we need to take the head off first. Or we can, I guess. We can take that off next. Cause it's about to get deep in it. We're about to start really tearing some stuff apart. And these are all half inch bolts. I got the uh, valve cover off or the head off and I started looking at it. I don't really see anything out of the ordinary that would say that a uh, valve is sticking or anything like that. There's debris and stuff all in here from whatever animal was living in here. And then I started rotating the piston around uh, by hand and it's not like there's an excessive amount of um, fluid coming out. So I'm almost wondering if we're just getting a lot of gas from the carburetor in here and it's just building back up and because it hasn't been ran in so long it's just built up and now it's just able to throw all that out because I didn't I also didn't have a spark plug in the uh, engine as well. So I'm going to put the head back on button all this stuff back up and put the spark plug in and see if it'll fire over and what will happen at that point um, because we're going to go ahead we get it to where it'll run we're going to go ahead and clean the carburetor anyway so those are what i'm going to do real quick because i don't see i don't see it's like le any leak by or anything like that and just spinning it i don't see any kind of um i don't see any scarring anywhere on the on the cylinder so let me get this down at the very bottom and I'll show you guys so I don't see any kind of scarring whatsoever that uh, would indicate something is wrong with those rings so I'm going to go ahead and put all this back together and then we're going to try to fire it over and then clean the carburetor to see if, uh, if that was just the issues. It was just dumping fuel into the system. So I got the uh, valve or the head back on and I also got the uh, carburetor reattached. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, battery pack back on to the uh, system and see if it'll try to crank over with the uh, with that spark plug in it. Okay. So we got the, the chokes on. Let's go ahead and uh, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen. It might throw out flames, but at least you guys will see. So 
I know that I have spark. I already checked that. So, yeah, that's getting a lot of fluid out. I think I'm going to go ahead and pop the uh, carburetor off and see what is happening with that because the, uh, the valves are working correct. They are opening and closing as they should. And I know I have spark, so I think we might just be getting way too much fuel to begin with. I got the choke is off. Oh. The battery is like completely dead. get that carburetor cleaned and uh, then we'll try it again so I pulled the carburetor off I started checking into it and as I started getting deeper and deeper into the carburetor I started looking and realized that there's no fluid in the carburetor there's no gas whatsoever and even the shutoff was closed so all the stuff that is flying out of here must be just oil instead of what I thought was gasoline it must be oil or there's just like a bunch of uh, fuel just left inside somewhere and that's why it's not firing off either but the carburetor is in pretty good condition surprisingly uh, the float is level so that means that the um, the needle is sitting all the way down in the seat when it's a uh, proper position and there's not really even any debris there's a little bit in the bowl but not nowhere near as bad as I've seen other other items let me see I got a little bit of fuel right here go ahead and put the uh, spark plug back in and also the cover and I was also looking at possibly the valve lash is out because we have um, where's the wrench so when I found top dead center and that's where it's at right now and the valve lash is like really, really big, or a, a big number. So this is at top dead center, and I have a lot of, of play right now on this. So I wonder if it's not starting because the uh, valve lash is off. So I don't know. We'll have to keep uh, digging into it though. I don't think it'll start like this either. Did you guys see some flames? I thought I saw some too. So I'm going to check that valve lash real quick 
and uh, and see if we can get it back into spec. I gotta find out what the uh, spec for that is. All right, just so you guys can see, we're at top dead center right now, and this is your exhaust port. And look at how much. I mean, that's that's terrible. That's a lot of extra play, and we have nothing in the uh, in the intake. No play whatsoever. So we're gonna adjust the exhaust a little bit and uh, see if we can get this cleaned up and. Hopefully that's what fixes this. Guys, I've been uh, working on this, getting the valve lash uh, all figured out, and I've got it nice and within spec. And the way you do that is by um, adjusting the actual bolt while you hold the, um, the little T-sock or whatever you want inside. Sometimes I've seen the um, like a hex wrench on the inside here and then you adjust the actual bolt head and that's what tightens this up and so now you can see that we have excellent movement hold on let me get to the exhaust there we go look at that that's excellent movement right so after i adjusted the um the lash on there see you got a little bit of play and um, my spec was 0.005 to 0.007 on exhaust and 0.004 to 006 I think on the intake and uh, so I got all those dialed in the one thing I started looking at and uh, was wondering is man that thing was really out all right so there is a piece right on the top of the uh the valve stem and what i think happened is that the exhaust piece broke off you guys see there's no piece in there so it was just um had all that lash and it was not running right whatsoever didn't want to probably start and so then somebody parked it and it's been parked for a long time that's when the engine locked up supposedly it pretty much just kind of seized up on its own from non-use and that is the cause for it not running that is what i'm uh guessing so i'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on if it starts up and runs we're gonna go ahead and uh figure out where i can get one of those little the little ends for the valve stem that way it's not just beating against the rocker into the valve stem i have a little bit of cushion because this was not on there whenever uh, we we took the cover off so it's not anywhere on the ground or anything like that so it's just gone all right guys so we know that the engine is a free spinning engine the engine is pretty good the body is in good shape man that's a lot of compression right there all right so hopefully with doing the uh, valve lash on that one and i'll end up having to go back in there and do it again when i get that part but at least we can see if the thing will even run so i'll put the choke on i have the uh, fuel inline uh shut off open and hopefully hopefully we'll see something here choke button real quick forgot about that
that's broken in there. Damn it. All right, so the choke is gonna have to be on right now because it the cable is actually broken. It's separated up here. So let's go see if we can get it to, to do its thing. That's it, guys. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So that uh, that one piece is all that uh, it fell out, and I would run it. For real right now but it's also 11 30 at night so we got to hear it crank over by the key which means that this is going to be a running engine i just need to get that one piece for the top of the uh the valve stem and i just got that donor motor in for the cub cadet that's probably got one of those pieces on it that can probably steal off of it all right, I went and hooked in, or I hooked the exhaust up, hoping to keep it a little bit quieter. And we're gonna go ahead and try this out again real quick, just to see if we can start it up again. That's it guys that's all it was is that one little tiny piece is what was stopping this from running made it go into a field or behind some trees somewhere and just sit be an animal's friend and uh you know that that was it that's it's crazy so that's all it was is that one little piece was stopping this from uh, running and it ended up not running right somebody pushed it off the side of the yard and just left it and it just never ran again it became a home for somebody and then the guy I bought it off of thought that the engine was completely locked up which after being able to break it free realized that it was not a locked motor so that is awesome there's a few other things that need to be addressed, like the rear tires. I don't know if they'll hold air or not, but the most part and most important thing is that the engine is running and that, I mean, it's running pretty good too. So I'm going to probably uh, leave it sitting out here for the night and then wrap everything all up, clean it up, and we'll end up getting this running tomorrow and try it out in some some of the grass so unfortunately with this mower it's gonna cost too much to uh, get it fully up and running um, it's gonna need tires battery and the tires brand new are, are like $60 a piece so if I can eventually find um, some used ones at a decent price I might change those and uh, get those replaced but it also needs a battery uh, definitely needs a battery it's got all these different cells in it and I tried to fill them and charge it and it won't take a charge. Um, but it's, uh, the mower is running, which is awesome, which was the uh, main goal of this whole video. is just to see if we can get this mower running. And it does, which is cool. We got a, unstu or a stuck motor unstuck. And uh, if somebody wants to buy it, they can go ahead and buy it and put a mower or a, uh, a engine on a different mower or something like that get some tires but uh, so there's definitely a price point that you guys always have to remember about with putting $50 into this and then I would have another about $150 or so ish into tires and a battery that would be putting me at right at a $200 spending on this mower and to me, that's not worth it. Uh, I could only probably get about $250 back 
from this mower. If you were gonna fix this up, then yes, it would be worth it to go ahead and put the extra money in and keep it. And that's, I've got it listed for sale right now and that's what it would be going for. If somebody wanted to buy it, they would literally be buying it just to fix it and keep it for themselves. Um, unless they had the extra parts already, then they'd be able to swap them out. If I find some really cheap tires, like where they would only cost maybe $30 together, um, and then I could find a cheap battery, then yes, it may be worth it, but buying the stuff new, it's it's not worth my time or uh, money to put into it because I wouldn't get it that back. So when you're working with this, always consider that when you're doing it. I got the engine running. This was $50. It bumped it up to about $125. Even if somebody wanted to buy it for just the, the uh, motor. I mean, it's a good motor. So uh, always remember that stuff when you guys are working with these small engines. Think about your uh, time and money and what you're actually going to get off of it. Thanks guys for watching. As always, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video of watching me get a uh, stuck motor unstuck, which was really cool. Um, this was the, one of the first ones I've had to get unstuck. And it wasn't even that bad. So uh, thanks guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, give it a thumbs up button. If you guys are new, welcome. Hit the uh, subscribe button and also hit that bell. That way you guys get notifications for when I post uh, future videos. We got some behind the scenes uh, work going on with the transmission. I uh, also got a, a new chop saw in so we can do a little bit more metal work. And uh, I got an extra special video coming up on uh, Sunday. So be prepared for that. It's uh, working with a different company. So uh, keep your eye open for that on uh, Sunday. Uh, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you guys later.